So I got this guidebook, and I'm going to be Breath of the Wild step by step, until I beat Ganon. Alright, let the story begin. After the introductory cutscene, you've gained full control of Link, which is this guy I'm assuming. You can move him around with the L stick, and control the camera with the R stick. Interact with the first terminal with A, then open the two treasure chests in the next room, to receive your first pieces of armor. Then activate the next terminal, you can now run outside sprinting with B, if you wish. Once I Outside, run down the slope exactly like this, collecting your first resources on the way, and speak to the old man by the campfire, you will receive your first main quest. Follow the Sheikah Slate. You will encounter your first enemy. Use this opportunity to practice basic combat skills by blah blah. I'll figure it out. And of course follow this path. The Sheikah Terminal, found inside a small rock structure, will rise the Great Plateau Tower. From the top of the tower, locate the Great Plateau's four orange glowing shrines. When you spot one, activate your scope by pressing R, and press A to place a pin on it. Once you have pinned on each of the four shrines, move between the ledges in a clockwise direction as you make your way back down to ground level. Now the old man asks you to visit your first shrine, and for some reason I have to swim here and not go around? Well, I guess I have to practice the swim in this game. Step on the elevator platform inside the building and examine it to enter the shrine. But before you do all that, consider making a brief detour to any pond in the area to catch a high rule bass and to the nearby forest of spirits to attain raw meat. <sighs> Fine. Once inside, interact with the terminal on the left to receive your first ruin, Magnesis. Simply move one of the two metal slabs aside, in the picture I have to move this one, to reveal a hole in the ground leading to the other side. Once on the other side, grab the metal cube in the wall and use it as a battering ram to knock down the pile of rocks. Head to the middle one and cast Magnesis on the metal slab, bridging the gap between the first two platforms. Once on the third platform, you can now open the large metallic doors by pulling the left one in your direction. Finally head to the altar and examine it to complete the shrine and receive your first spirit orb. Go through the main entrance to the west of the ruins. After a few steps past the archway, a decayed guardian is awake from its slumber, which looks like I have to get over him. Okay, fine. Wait a minute. I thought that guardian was bad. Oh, I guess we have to... Okay, we have to... Okay, we have to... Dude. Dude. Maybe we could... Maybe we can go around it. I know, I know. Around over the guardian, and then go over here, and then go in a straight line. Okay, we made it. That took way too long. Why did the guide say go over the guardians? Okay, so after whatever that was, we can go inside the shrine. Once inside the shrine, examine the terminal onto your left to receive a new ruin, the remote bomb. Try your new skill on the cracked block in the passage beyond. The opening on the right leads to a treasure chest, while the one on the left leads to the the next room. When you reach the moving platform, wait until it moves close to you, then drop a cube bomb on it. Detonate the bomb on the other side. You can then step on the moving platform, which will take you to the final room. Make your way to the launcher close to the left hand wall. It will propel you to the treasure chest on the opposite ledge. Head to the launcher on the right hand side of the room. Drop a spear bomb into the pipe so that it rolls into the launcher. It will be propelled to the destructible rocks. Detonate it to clear the path. Path. Finally, climb the ladder and run. And of course, follow the path like this. And where is this? Okay, so on the map, we have to go all the way around the Temple of Time. Okay, fine. You will find spicy peppers by the archway. Oh, perfect. In the far southeast of the Great Plateau, you will find the old man close to a hut. There are many collectibles in the area, including these specific mushrooms. You must combine spicy peppers and a Hyrule bass. This will lead to the creation of seafood fries. When you're ready, head to the southwest and cut a tree with a woodcutter's axe. It looks like I have to cut the middle one. Eliminate any bokoblins you encounter. Uh, they don't see me, so... Uh. The next shrine is situated at the top of the cliff that you are facing. Okay, now I have to go left, left, right, straight, left, and straight. Okay, perfect. Get in the shrine and interact with the terminal onto your left and obtain the stasis ruin. Try out your new power with the cogwheel in front of 
of you. Cast stasis while the rotating platform is in a horizontal position. Next, run to the bottom of the ramp. Observe the boulder that regularly roll down. Cast stasis on one of them. While it is frozen in time, sprint all the way to the top. From the chest, turn around and wait for a new boulder to roll, then sprint down the ramp. Well, close enough. Stand in front of the boulder blocking the way and cast stasis on it. Hit it once with your sledgehammer and then follow the path like this. Back outside, climb the cliff directly west. So I guess I'm going straight up then? Once at the top, you will reach an area with low temperatures. The path to the fourth shrine is relatively straightforward. Yep, straightforward alright. Examinate this terminal and head inside once you're ready. Okay, wait, where's the terminal again? Uh... Oh, on the left. Receive yet another vial. Rune? Grinosis. Create a block of ice in the small pool and use it as a stepping stone to reach the corridor above. In the next room, summon an ice block beneath the gate to open the way. You will encounter a guardian scout after you pass the gate. It should fall quickly to a few hits. When the battle ends, position an ice block at the base of the ledge with the treasure chest to access it. Finally, summon an ice block beneath either end of the beam, but I have to do it on the left side. It will form a ramp that you can use to make your way to the altar. Warp to the Shrine of Resurrection if you would like to shorten the journey. Listen, it's not about the journey, it's about getting there as fast as possible. Once inside the Temple of Time, pray in front of the large goddess statue. You will have an important choice to make. Well, the benefits of choosing the heart container should be obvious. Well, now my choice is clear. Now climb to the Temple of Time's rooftop to meet the old man. And it looks like I have to jump over this gap. Oh god, are you kidding me, dude? Ah, fuck it, I'll get it next time. Oh my god, that's that's impossible, isn't it? Maybe I can go a little off the book. Oh my god! Wait, I did it. The guide was right. Okay, now we can easily get up here. I finally made it through the gap. I'll never question the guidebook ever again. From your starting position, glide to the east and keep going the same direction until you reach the Dueling Peaks Tower. Pass between the two Dueling Peaks to find a first stable, which will give you an opportunity to register a wild horse found in the area. You can find more details on how this works on page 17. Okay. Ah, here it is. If you manage to move close to one of these by carefully crouch walking during an approach from behind. You can then press A to mount it. While riding a horse, steer with L. To increase your speed, tap A. After you tame your horse, take it to the stable and register it by speaking to the manager. Oh, I guess I need money also? Oh man, I don't know how to get money. The rest of the path to Kalkarigo Village is entirely straightforward. Following a linear canyon, once at Kalkarigo Village, we suggest that you activate the local shrine that overlooks the village. Sounds good. Head to the largest building inside which Empa awaits. Speaking to her completes the Seek Out Empa main quest. Retrace your steps through the Long Canyon until you cross the Calcarito Bridge. Before we go to the left, we are going to register our horse and name them Cow. Then keep on going to the main road until you reach a natural rock bridge shown here. Uh, I think I missed it. Cross it and head Wait, south. wait, hold up. I think I'm lost. Until you are within the climbing range of Hatino Tower. Carefully navigate the hazards just like this. When you make it to the top, activate the tower, then glide directly to the Hatino village's entrance. The ancient tech lab is located at the far end of the village. Speak to Simon inside the tech lab, then to this person. She will ask you to light the furnace on the tech lab's outer wall with a blue flame. Head back down to light your torch with the blue flame, then head back to the tech lab, making sure you light every lantern you encounter on the way. Once the tech lab's furnace is lit up, speak to this person again to activate the guidance stone, selecting your newly required camera rune. Yay! Now I can take a picture of my enemies when they kill me! The easiest captured memory spot to reach is most likely the second from the left in the top row. So, this one. Fast travel to this shrine? Uh, wrong place. You will find the interaction points shown on the above screenshot. Press A to recall the events that occurred at this location. After that, warp back to Impa at Kakarito Village. Impa rewards you with the champion's tunic. We suggest that that you begin with this divine beast. Take your way up to the shrine that overlooks the village, and then glide to the north. You can then head to the northeast in the direction of Laneru Tower. Looks like I have to go straight. What could go possibly wrong? Are you fucking kidding me? 
I may run as I wish. He's getting revenge when I stepped on him. Please don't hurt me. Oh my God. When I said what can go possibly wrong, I was kidding. I've never been more right in my entire life. The easiest way to climb Lane Root Tower is to make your approach from the northwest. Right, left, left, up. Once you're ready, glide down to Indigo Bridge to trigger a cutscene and meet Sidon. A long Zora River poses no greater challenge. Oh, thank God. Drink the electro elixir that Sidon gave you at the bridge. Eliminate each creature with quick melee combos. Are you- Pick up as many arrows as possible. After you pass Odin Bridge, you must dodge boulders rolling in your direction. Shortly afterwards, a large boulder will block your path. Cast stasis on it and strike it multiple times. The rest of your journey to Zoro's Domain is entirely straightforward. When you reach the village, activate the local shrine, then visit the king in the throne room. After speaking with him, speak to Muzu at the plaza. Equip the Zora armor received from the king and speak to Muzu again. Your next goal is to retrieve 20 shock arrows. With the Zora armor equipped, swim up the waterfalls by pressing A until you make it to the top of the mountain. The challenge here is a fearsome Lionel roams the area. So stay out of sight and crouch walk. Don't forget to take a picture of it. Sounds good. Once you're ready to proceed, head to the mountain's peak to the southwest. You can glide from here directly to Sidon's position on the pier. Speak to him and agree to begin your assault against the divine beast. As you ride on Sidon's back, the the best way to destroy these is with Crynosis. Every time you survive an ice block barrage, Sidon will take you to the monster, press A while passing close to the waterfall. At the peak of your flight, aim a shock arrow and do this four times. You can finally enter the divine beast. Fire an arrow at the glowing eyeball at the top of the ramp in front of you. There is a second eyeball waiting for you in the main room, just below the surface of the water. This will free the nearby gate, enabling you to lift Lift it with Crynosis and get the map and treasure chest. Return to the first room that you visited and grab the cogwheels handle. You can then walk over to activate it. Go for the gate opposite of the dungeon's entrance and run up the ramp. Take a right and defeat the guardian scout. Oh thank god, I didn't even know how to defeat the first one. Wait until the terminal is close to the bottom of the wheel, then use Crynosis to summon a block, enabling you to access the terminal. When you are at the uppermost point of the cog, wheels rotation glide and this will give you access to the second treasure chest move the divine beast trunk to its fourth increasement from the top to make the second larger windmill spin fire an arrow at the eyeball and you can subsequently access the third treasure chest hop to it eliminate the guardian scout glide to the walkway connected to the large water mill you can extend the time window by casting stasis on the orb examine it use stasis and free to jump on it and receive the contents of the chest before stasis ends. Glide down to the pool on the bottom floor, then swim upward to return to the top of the waterfall. Head inside the corridor beyond it. And then I got the fifth treasure chest. Move the trunk to its lowest position. Once it stops moving, glide down to the small platform on the tip of the trunk. From your position at the tip, move the trunk again, readjust Link's position so as to remain at the top of the structure. You will end up in front of the fourth terminal. Then I went down here and shot this guy to get this treasure chest. You can glide to the nearby central platform, drop down through the small hole in the middle, immediately eliminate the eyeball on the ceiling with an arrow. Grab the near handle with magnesis and rotate it clockwise. Open your map and move the trunk to the fifth increasement from the top. This will cause the flow of the water to extinguish the flames around the terminal directly below and examine the fifth terminal. Drop down to the ledge directly below to find the dungeon's final treasure chest. Thank God. The main control unit is found in the only room that you haven't explored yet. Interact with it to trigger a boss battle. Okay, guidebook, please don't let me down here. When you stand very far from Waterblight Ganon, it will often throw its spear at you. The best way to avoid this attack is the side hop or by sprinting. Over medium distances, Waterblight Ganon will often launch a sweeping attack, and after dealing significant amounts of damage, you will occasionally cause your foe to collapse. Waterblight Ganon usually starts this phase by hurling a block of ice in your direction, and he's dead. I just saved us four steps. When Waterblight Ganon finally falls, be sure 
sure to collect the Harkatainer. Once outside, you will receive Mipha's Grace. After getting the spear, we are now going to the desert. Purchase stable garb from this armor shop. God damn it. Glide to the southwest, then head through the Gerudo Canyon. Make your way to the stable. From the Gerudo Canyon stable, climb the cliff to the south until you reach the top of the scaffolding. Make your way towards the Wasteland Tower. The Wasteland Tower is surrounded by a bog. Summon blocks of ice with Krynosis to make your way to the tower. Climb to the top and activate the terminal to receive the regional map. Why do I keep on getting these towers again? Is this gonna help me to beat the game? Whatever, I'll figure it out. From the top of the Wasteland Tower, glide to their general direction. You cannot enter Gerudo Town because I'm a guy. Great. However, if you speak to this guy between the city and the shrine, he will tell you about a man who found a solution to this problem. Head back and climb to the top of the rock. I guess I can't use this ladder. She will then propose that you will buy her clothes for 600 rubies. If you're short on funds, consider selling gems. Sounds good. Next, head back to Gerudo Town. You can't enter the city without drawing attention. Make your way to the main building and speak to this person. Next, visit the courtyard in the town's west corner. Your new objective is to infiltrate the Yiga clan hideout. The most efficient way to complete the journey is to rent a sand seal for 20 rubies. Once mounted, it's time to venture deep into the Karasov Valley. When you reach this cliff, climb up, then go the rest of the way on foot. Once inside the large round room, pick up a torch and light up the one o'clock relative to the entrance, leading to the Yiga clan hideout. Stealth is highly recommended inside, thank god. We suggest that you take the most direct path. Wait until he disappears behind the passage to your left, then glide forward and walk down to the steps. In the next room, hide behind this large block. Then I have to try throwing a mighty banana into his line of sight. I said throwing a mighty banana into his line of sight. Okay, close enough. Go around the block and walk through the gate. So this next part of the guide, I can do this part two different ways. And I'm gonna do approach A for this video. Climb the ladder at the end of the corridor. At the top, follow the walkway and you will find a large pile of mighty bananas and a treasure chest. From the opening of the wall, drop down to the pillar, sprint and jump to the wooden ledge against the wall. When the guard passes below your position, quickly glide to the ladder. From the top of the ladder, move along the wall until you stand above the blade master. Guarding the exit, throw a mighty banana. Oh, it actually worked this time. Use this opportunity to drop down behind him and swiftly pass through the doorway. In the final room, open the treasure chest, pull the metal slab with magnesis. Now we have this boss. Align an arrow shot and let it fly at the precise moment when one of the boulder passes above his head. And then I beat this weird boss. A treasure chest will appear. Open this to obtain the Thunder Helm. Warp to the shrine and climb up the stairs to return the Thunder Helm. Taking a sand seal is the quickest way to reach your destination, which is right here. Climb up the ladder to reach the top of the lookout platform. She will give you 20 bomb arrows during the seal surfing sequence. Your objective is to take down each of the Divine Beast four hooves with bomb arrows and do this four times. From the dungeon's warp point, eliminate the guard Guardian, then head to the end of the walkway. You will find a glowing eyeball at the top of the ramp. Shoot it with an arrow and open the way to the dungeon's main room. Run to the opposite side and climb up the ramp to your right. This will take you to a terminal that provides you with the dungeon's map. Open the map menu to rotate the front ring three times. Step on the walkway that is to your right. If you are facing the divine beast's head, you will end up at the first terminal a short distance in front of you. Sprint and jump over it. If you look in the gap that you jumped over, you will notice a glowing eyeball. Eliminate it with an arrow, then glide down to the first treasure chest. Rotate the middle one, drop down on the other side, directly next to the second treasure chest. Head to the rear of the Divine Beast. You will notice a treasure chest hanging from a rope. Cast Stasis on it, and as soon as Stasis ends, grab the treasure chest with Magnesis. You must now rotate all three discs so that the power cables are aligned at the top of the structure. Head inside either opening on the rotating disc, you will have access to an exit overlooking the Divine Beast's neck. First, however, you must open a new treasure chest. Ugh, <sighs> fine. Drop down to the platform with a cross-shaped lever. Pushing it clockwise will trigger the rotation of a small disc onto the left, and do the same thing onto the right. This will rise the Divine Beast's neck and activate an elevator platform. Step on the elevator and ride it all the way to the top to find the second terminal. Sprint and leap to the central platform with the green crystal. 
crystal, reach the shaft at the opposite side of the main room, drop down to either side of the divine beast's tail, glide to the treasure chest on a small ledge, glide again to the walkway below. Adjust the position of the sliding power connectors with magnesis. This will cause the tail section of the divine beast to move upward. This will give you access to the back of the hump of the divine beast. Inside the hump, shoot the glowing eyeball. Climb up the ladder to reach the ledge above the door. Rotate the cross-shaped lever until the power feeds the electrode. This will activate the sliding platform. Take the elevator down and use magnesis to get the chest. The other ledge features an electric orb. Pull it to your position with magnesis. Ride the elevator back to the top and use the sliding platform to reach the other hump. Eliminate the guardian scout when you arrive. Hit the glowing eyeball just beneath the platform, which the third terminal was trapped. Jump to the top of the sliding platform. This will give you access to the treasure chest. Pick up the second electric orb, ride all the way to the lowest floor, then lift the electric orb with magnesis. This will open the gate and give you access to the adjacent room. Deal with the guardian scouts inside, ideally with an ancient weapon. Pick up the electric orb and drop it in one of the small pedestals, giving you access to the fourth terminal. Jump to your left and glide around its right hind leg. Step inside the cube shaped room. You will notice the fifth terminal positions on the wall in front of you. Move to the left side of the front ring and climb up to the walkway as instructed here. You will notice two round openings. Throw a bomb at the opening on the right. Then get the eighth treasure chest. Oh my god, there are so many. So then I went to the other side and got the ninth treasure chest. Examinate it to trigger this dungeon's boss fight. Alright, here we go. Run sideways or side hop right as your opponent casts the balls with his right arm. And after blocking some attacks, we get to the second phase. And how do we do this? I am so glad you asked. So we have to go up here with a thunder stick and then smack it. From this point forward, the boss will resume his previous attack pattern, alternating between lightning balls and ward based melee combos. When Thunderblade Ganon collapses, rush to its position and attack. Pick up the heart container in front of you. When you return outside, you will receive Yobosa's Fury. Open the two chests by her throne. By now, you should be sufficiently familiar with the game. Nope. Not at all. Go to this specific spot. Let's go. Glide to a very high point on the structure. Climb all the way to the top and unlock the regional map. Resume your journey to the north by going through the Giga clan hideout again. When you reach the arch shown above the picture, glide past it, then turn west. Keep progressing west. Keep moving north alongside the western ledge. You will soon have Bantha Tower in sight. When we get to the tower, eliminate the glowing eyeball fixed to the pillar in that direction. Direction. You can now easily ascend to reveal the regional map. Glide towards the wooden bridge just east of the village. Then make your way to visit the village's chief. You need at least two armor pieces granting cold resistance. Glide to the cliff and follow the path to the north. This leads directly to the flight range. The flight range features a cooking pot. Finally, I can use another cooking pot. Now begin your archery skill test. Hit five blue glowing targets with arrows within three minutes. After you pass the test, open the treasure chest, then speak to him again if you're ready to proceed. Now use bomb arrows to destroy four cannons. Once you've done this, collect the first treasure chest, head inside the dungeon, and eliminate the glowing eyeball. Then get the second treasure chest. From the second treasure chest, glide into the corridor featuring the map terminal. Get rid of the Guardian Scout 2 on the way. Then get the third treasure chest. From the edge of the walkway, look down again and shoot an arrow at the glowing eyeball. This will reveal yet another god damn treasure chest. Catch the updraft of the opposite side of the room. Glide down to the large ladder, then eliminate the glowing eyeball, and leap to the nearby doorway. Look to your left, and fire an arrow at the glowing eyeball again. Man, there are so many glowing eyeballs. Climb back up to the top of the ramp. Open your map, and tilt the divine beast. Slide to it, activate the first terminal. Finally, run to the highest point of the walkway, and get yet another treasure chest. Drop a round bomb into the pipe, to the right of the barred gate. Detonate the bomb to clear the way. Now hit the nearby crystal to complete a lateral wind stream. Detonate it to release a large metallic boulder. Open your map and tilt the divine beast by selecting the lowest point. Grab it with magnesis and move it to the right. Drop it close to the pipe. Then tilt the divine beast by selecting the highest increment. This will cause the boulder to roll down and press the switch. Once the gate is rised, examine the terminal in that room. Hit the crystal once more to reopen the shutters. Glide 
slide to the platform below and eliminate the two glowing eyeballs. Turn around and look towards the tip of the wing. It is possible to glide to the room found there, which contains the next terminal. Open the map and tilt the Divine Beast by selecting the lowest increment, then you can glide back to the central room. After shooting this glowing eyeball, glide to the room beyond. Walk up the ramp and activate the terminal. One more terminal left. Turn around and shoot the glowing eyeball. Wow, how did you know? This will release a treasure chest, because of course. Hit the crystal to open the shutters. A battering ram will slide to the bottom. Now open your map and tilt the divine beast by selecting the highest increment. Cast magnesis on the windmill, enabling the battering ram to hit the pressure switch at full speed, giving you access to the final terminal. Then I got the seventh treasure chest, drop down to the central room, and ride the updraft all the way to the top to trigger the boss battle. When Windblade Ganon stands at ground level, it usually unleashes a tornado, a line clean shots. But then we have the second phase, and this was easy. Once Windblade Ganon falls, collect the heart container, interact with the main control unit, and you will receive Revalvi's Gale. Claim my reward from the treasure chest. If you need assistance to find your way to Goron City, why yes I do. The easiest solution is probably to warp on this tower. The path leading to Foothill Stable should be uneventful. Speak to this person who offers fireproof elixirs for sale. We suggest that you buy three of these. Great. From the stable, keep following the road to the northwest. When you find the Elden Tower at the top, glide to the northwest. From this point forward, you need the flame guard effect. The final leg of the journey takes you through the southern mine. Follow the path leading to Goron City to the north. Immediately head to the armor shop and purchase at least two pieces of armor. Next task is to find a Goron named Yanobo. Make your way to the abandoned north mine. You will encounter several enemy outposts on the way. After eliminating the first two groups, catch the updrafts to the east to reach the small island beyond their position. A cannon here will enable you to defeat both groups of monsters. Follow the path to the north until you reach a new cannon. Rotate it to destroy the outpost with a skull-shaped building. Once the path is clear, head to the next cannon. A single cannon shot is enough to blow the entire output. Climb to reach the top of the rock peak. Drop a bomb in the pipe. Detonate your bomb. Head over to speak to Yanobo inside the cave. Don't forget to open the treasure chest. Follow the path to the north of Goron City. Keep following the path and you will find this guy again. And he is being attacked by moblins. Approach one from behind and open hostilities with a powerful sneak strike. After you beat the other one up, put him inside the cannon and use the same method that you used before. During the next sequence, you must make progress towards the summit without being spotted. Take shelter under the large rock that extends over a proportion of the road. Climb up to the cliff on your left. You will find rock boulders at the top, which you can push. Push a boulder to a side. When you reach the cannon, drop a round bomb. Climb up the cliff to your left again. You will find metallic cubes at the top. Grab one with magnesis and do this twice. Take a metallic with you. Fine. When you run into another cannon, proceed exactly as you did before. Get rid of the next two guys, then boom, boom, and boom. Oh, there I did it. All right, let's do this. From your starting point in the dungeon, get the first treasure chest, then get the second, third, and fourth chest. Use your torch to light up the barred gate. Once this is open, get the fifth, sixth, and seventh chest. Also destroy the guardian scout. Light up your torch via the previous lantern, then head to the far corner of the room. Set an arrow on fire with the blue flame and shoot at the ivy. Open them with magnesis and activate the terminal. Then get the eighth treasure chest. You could see an unlit lantern through a hole. Light the arrow with the blue flame, then fire. This will open the gate. Shoot at the ivy on the ceiling. This will cause a large metal cube to fall. Position the metal cube next to the red fire streams. You can enter the room beyond. After that, light up your torch with one of the blue flames. Now open your map and tilt the dungeon by 90 degrees. The long beam becomes a ramp. Jog all the way to the top. Once you turn left, drop down to the unit. Open air lantern just below. Tilt the dungeon again, then light up the lantern. Lighting the torch will release an orb that rolls down. Follow the orb until it stops. Then tilt the dungeon. The orb rolls down to the bottom of the ramp. But first get this terminal. But after that, lift the magnetic cube with magnesis and activate the terminal. Then get the ninth treasure chest. I don't know where this one is. Oh well, next. From your position of the ninth treasure chest, uh, there I got it. Then get the 10th and 11th treasure chest. Now head back to the main control unit. Embrace yourself for a boss battle. In fact, 
the last boss until Ganon. This boss often performs a swift sweeping attack. This has very short wind up, so be on your guard. It throws a volley of fireballs at you, which you can dodge these by sprinting away. Then I threw a bomb, and that was it. After the battle, collect the heart container. Once outside, you will receive Daruk's protection. And now that we are done all four divine beasts, the next step in the guide is to get the master sword. So let's do this. From this tower, follow the road leading to the northwest. The tower is a short distance away. Wait a minute. To cross the bog, summon as many ice blocks as you need with Krynosis. Once you activate the tower, glide to the northwest and land on the path leading to the entrance of the lost woods. Follow the trail of torches. When you reach the third flame, make a 90 degree turn to your left. After another three flames, turn left again to find a lone flame. Make a 90 degree turn to your right and head towards the two torches in the distance. Take a left and head straight to the large tree. When you reach it, make a 90 degree turn to your right and then turn to your right again. You will soon reach a small canyon on your left. Head through it. Now pull the master sword from its stone. All right, let's try it. Okay, cool. We suggest that you go on a grand tour of Hyrule Castle. Fine. Approach the castle from the north. You will see two cave entrances. Go through the one on the right. The lockup features multiple cells. In the final room to your right, there is a boss. And after this boss, you get the Hylian shield. Once the Hylian shield is yours, backtrack to the entrance. And this time, head to the main tunnel leading to the docks. Follow the ledge on the left-hand wall, then go up the stairs. At the top of the stairs, grab the bookcase that blocks the pathway of Magnesis. This gives you access to the library. Make your way to the exit. Follow the linear corridors until you make it to the armory. After defeating a few enemies, pick up as many weapons as you can. Climb to the floor above once you're done. The door to the right leads to the dining hall. This features a few monsters and ingredients that you can collect. The next destination is down the stairs. Go up here and glide to your right from the balcony. You will find a closed gate after a few steps. Rise it with Krynosis. From the corridor, take a left and pay a visit to the guard's chamber. After you've plundered the weapon racks, backtrack to the previous corridor. This time, take a right and head into the long corridor. Shoot an arrow at the glowing eyeball to clear the path. Then exit the castle at the other end. Run up the nearby stairs. Climb to reach Princess Zelda's room. Oh. Okay then, glide to the pool and use the Zora armor to swim up the waterfalls until you reach the castle's main entrance. Now there were a lot of things that I've learned from this journey, thanks to this book. And now let's begin to fight Ganon. Now, at close range, Calamity Ganon will regularly perform melee attacks with his fire-infused sword. And now with all of this information that the guidebook has given me, there is no way, no way I can lose now. And just like that, we were at the second phase. Every time Ganon performs melee attacks, you have the opportunity to perform a perfect dodge. And with the perfect dodge flurry rush combination, you can easily beat the boss. Thank you, guidebook. But we have one more mission to do. After Calamity Ganon falls, you will regain control of Link outside the castle. Collect and equip the nearby Bow of Light. With the Bow of Light drawn, head to either side of the creature and wait for glyphs to appear on its body. Do this seven times, but then we have the last Last one, the last step to beat Breath of the Wild. Let's read it, shall we? Finally, gallop until you are in front of Dark Beast Ganon. You will soon see its weak point. Wait for your enemy to unleash a beam of energy and use the updraft. This generates the fly high in the air. This offers for a cinematic opportunity for the perfect slow motion finishing arrow. And just like that, we beat Breath of the Wild exactly as Nintendo attended. Wait. Hold up. You may have reached the end of the main storyline, but your venture in Hyrule is far from over. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I can't stand this guidebook anymore. I'm done. If you enjoyed this video, then please subscribe. Okay, bye.